NATO has come out and said, Haha, prepare for war, <laughs> you poor people. Uh, here we go. This is Admiral Rob Bauer. The, the realization that not everything is planable, not everything is going to be honky-dory in the next 20 years. I'm not saying it is going wrong tomorrow, but we have to realize it's not a given that we are in peace. And that's why we have the plans. That's why we are preparing for a conflict with, uh, uh, with Russia and the terror groups, if it comes to it, if they attack us. We're not seeking any conflict. So this to me is very reminiscent of World War I. So you have a bunch of countries who are uncomfortable that Germany's getting a little bit, uh, a little too big for its britches. And they're like, nah, don't really like that. England starts putting out some um, rhetoric about, you know, Germany and, and, and itself. And, uh, you know, we need to be wary of our neighbors and stuff like that. They, they start putting that out there, the feelers. And then all of a sudden, Franz Ferdinand and his wife, they, they get shot. And then the countries are like, well, we're going to war and we're bringing our friend. And we're like, well, we're bringing our friend and we're bringing our friend. And then eventually you have World War One, mm -hmm. And then what happens? You shuffle up the powers and then you have World War Two come along. And Germany is being so economically sanctioned that uh, they elect one of the worst leaders of all time. Possibly. I mean, there's been some pretty nasty ones in China and Russia as well. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. He's up there. Yeah, he's, he's definitely he's, up there. He's definitely up there. But when you think about this, it's like, how do you take normal, rational people and put them into an irrational situation, like a war or where you're rounding up your neighbors and, and executing them? It's when you actually create the conditions, you condition them first with weird propaganda with with these narratives and then you squish them economically to the point where they feel that they have no other option and that's what i feel like is happening it feels very reminiscent of world war one and world war world ah, world war one world war two where it's just you're crushing people economically um all around the western world um because we're seeing it in all these different countries and then you're pushing out rhetoric you're pushing out cultural items like you had mentioned before that speak to the possibility of war. They flirted the idea of, of a draft um, just in the States and Gen Z lost their mind about it, um, which rightfully so. I, I don't want to go fight for a corporate interest. No way. I was in the military before and I left and that was my own choice, but I don't want to be forced back into something that I don't want to be in. Free speech, free choice, you know, freedom of autonomy of, of being and be able to self-determine, all that good stuff. And frankly, it's just, it's so reminiscent that I'm just concerned that we are heading for World War III because they want it so badly. And it's just like, why? Who is making money off of this? Mm -hmm. So I remember during the 2016 election in the States, Hillary's big speech was, man, if Trump gets in, we're headed for World War Three. Didn't happen. But as soon as the establishment gets back in power, all of a sudden, chaos erupts around the globe. How did that happen? Mm -hmm. Come on, man. Like, it's... It, yes, you said interests greater than us want us to be at war. And they are blaming Russia. And that Russia's the aggressor. Meanwhile, if you look... Out of history, I hate to tell you, we're the ones who are poking the bear. And as much as I'm not a fan of Putin as as a leader, he is a tyrant. Uh, we've put him in a box and forced him to to attack, and that's what we're seeing. And now you get the general up here who has the audacity to say that, well, you know, we might be forced into a war. I'm like, bro, we told Russia. NATO would never expand east of Germany. We told them that, and then we kept expanding, and then we kept expanding. And then you started flirt, floating ideas that Ukraine was going to join NATO. Then Russia's like, <laughs> we're, we're done playing now. We're going to invade Ukraine. Like, just to prove a point. And that's where we're at right now, 
is the reason why Russia didn't invade Ukraine was Trump was an A in power and he's a maniac. And he told him straight up, you and you, you is so much across the border. That's not your own. I'm going to bomb Moscow. Yep. And they, he said, okay, sir, <laughs> we won't be doing that. And, but then as soon as Biden gets into power, we're crossing over the Donbass region and we're taking Ukraine, you know? I know. Did you see the, the video that the Trump um, campaign put out? Which on? one? <laughs> the, uh, the White House senior residence video. No. It was so good. <laughs> and like, I'm not a, a big Trump fan, but this was hilarious. So he put out this video and it's like, um, senior like senior white house residents where our residents feel like presidents and then <laughs> they've got these clips of joe biden he's just like i i eat all the food that they put in front of me and you're like oh man it's brutal. It's brutal. <laughs> no wonder these other countries are just looking at the states and going now's the time to, to act yeah because like you said like for all the faults that trump has like he said to them he's like you you know, you make so much of a move and we're going to bomb Moscow. And he was like, crap, he might actually bomb Moscow. <laughs> he's wild enough to do that. They look at Biden, they go, he would never do that. No. You know, he's, he's drinking his food through a straw. Like <laughs> they're, they don't care. And so that's where I kind of like look at it too. I'm like, you have to look at the strength of, of the leader and say, is this person going to be something that people are going to take seriously? And I bringing it back to Canada because I like to do that. When you look at our current government, people are snubbing our government left, right, and center. Like people who are on the left are snubbing our government left, right, and center in the political sphere beyond Canada's borders. And so when you look at that, you say, not only have the people lost confidence in this guy, but the rest of the world has lost confidence in this guy. We need to get him out. Because what does that mean? If people don't think he's anything and they think he's a joke, that means they think Canada's a joke. And then I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. So... If anything, even if he's a nice guy, like let's say all the crap that he pulled didn't happen and the world just doesn't think that he's anything. They think he's a drama teacher. They don't, they don't respect him. Even if he was a great guy, you still got to get him out because you need somebody out there that the world is going to respect yeah. because otherwise you, you have what happened in mm -hmm. <laughs> Russia and Ukraine. And that's what I think. I think you make a very good point of comparing the Biden to Trudeau because that's what we're seeing is installing weak leaders so that they can be controlled by higher interests. And that's what we're seeing. Corporate interests are controlling our democracy. They are controlling what we know and, and, and they're making money off of it. And th they're the ones who are driving us into war. Like the fact I didn't see that, that, that video we just watched with, uh, let's, let's pull up his name again. Um, with the NATO's military committee, Admiral Rob Bauer. The fact I'm hearing from this guy, some guy in NATO, and not hearing from the leader of the free world, not hearing from Joe Bod, not hearing from a president about what we're going to do. I'm hearing from NATO's military committee about us going into a world war. How the heck does that make any sense? Yeah. That's not right. So that just shows you this whole, you know, the people that still believe this is a conspiracy theory that there's, they're trying to aim for a one over oh, one world government. I think it's just more of a conspiracy at this point where, yeah, they're conspiring. 